What's up guys? Today we're talking about Mortal Kombat Onslaught and how to not suck at it. Specifically, we'll be covering all the basics so you can skip that confusion stage that comes with playing a new game and jump straight into the domination. I'll actually be releasing two new player guide videos. This one will give you an overview of the game itself and in a couple days I'll be dropping my top 10 list of pro tips for new players. To quickly introduce myself, my name is Casino and I've been playing Onslaught as well as making content for the game since the start of the early access. I make tier lists, relic guides, and all sorts of other community resources for the game which we'll touch on at the end of this video. I'm going to try to keep things brief, but there will be timestamps in the video description if you're looking to skip around. So to keep it moving, let's start with Affinities. As a newer player, understanding how affinities work will give you a massive advantage over players who don't. Every character belongs to one of three affinities, body, mind, or spirit. It's basically a rock, paper, scissors system where each affinity is strong against one, weak against another, and neutral against themselves. Body is weak to mind, mind is weak to spirit, and spirit is weak to body. Choosing characters that give you affinity advantage, or even just choosing characters to avoid having affinity disadvantage, makes a huge difference. When a character has affinity advantage, they gain 15% critical chance, 30% critical damage, 15% mastery, and 20% total damage. But that's not all, because their target also receives affinity disadvantage, meaning they suffer minus 15% critical chance, minus 30% critical damage, minus 50% mastery, and minus 20% total damage. Just knowing to position your characters to gain affinity advantage will make all the difference in a match. So take note. Star Ratings Every character in the game has a star rating. One star and two star characters only show up as enemy characters, so there's no need to worry about them. Playable heroes start at three star and there are two types, characters and minions. Minions are even weaker than characters because they don't get any combos, which we'll touch on later. The main drawback to three star characters is that they only come equipped with three abilities. By comparison, four star characters are a step up in power as they not only get all around higher base stats and better combos, but they also get access to four abilities. However, the top tier characters are definitely the five star characters as they easily have the best base stats and combos. They also come equipped with four abilities, but they get access to an additional unique combo, which we'll talk about in just a bit. There are three star characters who are strong even for late game content, so definitely check out our tier list infographic on the Discord for tips on which characters are worth upgrading. Combos. Every character has six combos, which are either stat boosts or ability modifiers, which can be unlocked by collecting a duplicate of that character. Each dupe unlocks one combo level, meaning you'll need to dupe a character six times to fully upgrade their combos. Minion characters don't have combos, so sucks to be them. Three star characters all share the same stat boost combos, except for combo three, which provides them a unique upgrade in the form of an ability modifier. Four star characters also all share the same stat boost combos with each other, except for combo three, which like three stars is a unique ability modifier. However, just by virtue of being a four star, their stat boost combos are considerably stronger. Naturally, five star characters have it the best as they also all share stat boost combos, which are superior to three star and four star combos, but they also get two unique ability modifier combos. Their first at combo one and their second at combo three. Soul Binding. Every character can have their star rating increased all the way up to six stars via what's known as Soul Binding. While there are definitely good reasons to raise a character's star rating, you can't actually improve their combos or grant them access to any new abilities, so a lot of a character's potential is simply rooted in their original star rating. Increasing a character's star rating does improve their base health and base attack by around 3%, which isn't a huge boost, but it's something. However, the main reason to increase a character's star rating is to raise their level cap. Three star characters can't be upgraded beyond level 60. Upgrading a four star allows you to take them up to 80, and five star lets you take them up to level 100. As of this recording, boosting them to six stars does not allow you to take them to level 120, but it's a safe assumption that we will see that level cap raise sooner or later. Classes. Every character in the game belongs to one of six classes. Each class has unique strengths and weaknesses, as well as unique rules for which enemies they look to target first. The six classes are Defender, Warrior, Assassin, Attacker, Support, and Sniper. This entry could easily be an entire video of its own, so I'll probably make a video all about classes, positioning, and targeting in the future, but I at least want to give you the basics. 
Defenders are melee fighters with the highest health and defense of all the classes who will literally steal aggro away from other melee allies, meaning they will force enemies to target them. Warriors are melee fighters who tend to have high attack and above average health and defense with a focus on dealing damage, and they typically clash against frontline enemies. Assassins are also melee fighters who typically have devastatingly high attack, offset by really low HP, who typically have a mechanic which allows them to either dive right into the backline or focus out a particularly weak enemy. Attackers are ranged characters with high attack and low defense who focus on dealing area of effect damage and look to target enemy frontliners. Supports are ranged characters with moderate defense and above average health and attack who provide a variety of utility effects like healing, buffing, and debuffing. And finally, snipers are ranged characters with the highest attack of any class as well as the lowest health and defense, who will prioritize attacking backline enemies directly across from them. Understanding which classes target which enemies plays a huge part in capitalizing on affinity advantage, so definitely pay attention to your team's positioning. Stats. Understanding the stats and what they provide will help you equip your characters for success, so here's a super quick rundown. As most of you probably already know, health determines how much damage a character can endure before being defeated, attack increases the damage for all of their abilities, and defense reduces incoming damage by a percentage. However, some of the other stats are a bit less obvious. Initiative determines when two melee characters target each other who gets to attack first. Higher initiative wins. Block determines how likely a character is to block an incoming melee attack, reducing its damage by 75%. Dodge determines how likely a character is to dodge an incoming ranged attack, completely avoiding any damage. Accuracy determines how likely a character is to land an attack and is the counter to both dodge and block. Critical chance represents the likelihood of landing a critical hit, and critical damage determines how much additional damage a critical hit deals. Physical resistance and magical resistance both reduce damage dealt by enemies who deal the corresponding damage type. Mastery increases the likelihood of applying a status effect like burn or stun, and tenacity counters it by increasing the likelihood of resisting an incoming status effect. And finally, haste reduces the cooldown on both basic attacks and auto abilities. Gear and Gear Sets Gear is another topic that will definitely require its own dedicated video down the line, but I wanted to make sure to at least cover the basics here because as a new player, understanding gear makes all the difference when it comes to getting a strong start. There are six types of gear pieces, Heads, weapons, arms, legs, torsos, and accessories. They each have several traits, including primary stat, substats, level, tier, rarity, and set bonus. Primary stat is the first listed stat, which increases with each gear level. Heads will always provide health, arms will always provide attack, legs will always provide defense. Weapons will always provide either attack, critical chance, critical damage, mastery, or accuracy. Torsos will always provide either health, defense, tenacity, dodge, or block. Accessories will always provide either dodge, block, mastery, tenacity, haste, accuracy, magical resistance, or physical resistance. Note that accessory gear pieces are currently the only source of haste in the game. Substats are fairly straightforward as well. Which ones you get are completely random, and the amount you get, as well as the amount they increase when they upgrade, are also random within set limits. Every stat in the game can appear as a substat except haste, and substats cannot repeat which also includes the primary stat, meaning you will not get critical chance substat on a weapon that has a critical chance stat as its primary. However, specifically, health, attack, and defense can all appear twice, once as a flat stat and again as a percentage, meaning you can roll both plus 34 defense and plus 4% defense. Gear level is fairly straightforward. All gear can be leveled up by feeding other gear pieces to it. Each time you level up a piece of gear, you improve the primary stat. The maximum level for a gear piece is 15. Gear tier determines the overall quality of the gear piece. The higher the tier, the higher all of the stats provided by the gear will be. So always be on the lookout for higher tier gear. Rarity determines how many substats are initially visible for a gear piece at level one, as well as how many substat upgrades a gear piece receives. When leveling up a piece of gear, every third level either unlocks a new substat or upgrades an existing substat. Therefore, higher rarity gear pieces are better not only because you know up front if they have substats you actually want, but they also come with more substats already unlocked, meaning when you level them up, you instead get more substat upgrades. Here's a handy graphic that should help explain it. 
And finally, set bonuses represent a bonus stat boost your characters receive if they equip a certain number of gear pieces that belong to the same set. For example, equipping two pieces of health set gear grants a bonus plus 15% health. Gear set bonuses do not stack with themselves, meaning you won't get another plus 15% for equipping four health set pieces, so don't bother. Relics. Relics are specialized pieces of equipment that provide a variety of benefits for your characters. Every relic has a primary stat, a secondary stat, a relic effect, a level, and a rarity. Unlike gear, relics always provide the same fixed primary and secondary stats, as well as relic effects. Meaning this Draman's Mask will always provide an attack primary stat and accuracy secondary stat, which both increase with every level. Relic effects provide additional incredibly powerful bonuses to your characters. For example, the Fury of the Matoka tribe provides a bonus 15% attack, 15% defense, and a 15% chance to stun an enemy for 8 seconds with each auto attack. Relic effects have their own levels which increase at level 3 and then every third level after that. Relics can be leveled up to 15 at first before you'll need to limit break them to further increase their level. You limit break a relic by feeding it a copy of the same relic. Each time you limit break a relic, you increase its level cap by 3, and you can limit break up to 5 times, maxing out a relic at level 30. Many relics also come with equip restrictions. Common relics can actually be equipped by any character, but nearly all uncommon or better relics can only be equipped to a specific class or classes. Take this Wrath Hammer, which can only be equipped to defenders. There are even unique relics, also called Fatality Relics, which can only be equipped to a specific character and their variants, which provide tremendous stat boosts in addition to the ability to perform a Fatality. For example, Cryomancer's Frozen Axe can only be equipped to Sub-Zero and Arctica Sub-Zero, and enables his Fatality off with your head. Fatality. For the Lin Kuei. Now we'll take a look at the game modes. Story Mode Story Mode is a great source of resources as a newer player, and it also increases your gong rewards. The gong slowly accumulates resources over time, and the farther you progress in story, the more resources your gong will provide, so clearing story is a definite priority for new players. Once you've claimed the 3-star rewards for a stage, you won't be able to claim any further rewards from it, so you can progress further without looking back. Chasm Chasm is another great source of resources for newer players. As of this recording, there are 100 Chasm stages, and like Story Mode, each one has unique conditions for a 3-star clear. Chasm is home to a lot of fun and unique battles, including stages with 6 or more waves of enemies, as well as mini-bosses every 5 stages. Once you've claimed the 3-star rewards for a Chasm battle, you'll have the option to auto-win it additionally for lesser rewards. Each day you can replay 5 Chasm stages for more rewards. For new players, I recommend replaying the stages that award either the gear chests or the relic XP. The gear will always be tier 1 common crap, but it's perfect for leveling up better gear. Boss Tower Boss Tower is, in my humble opinion, the most important game mode to focus on. As of this recording, there are four vastly different boss towers, each requiring different characters and strategies to conquer and providing unique rewards. Each boss tower has its own unique mechanics that make the fight uniquely challenging. I definitely plan to make individual videos for each boss tower, but for now, I can give you a general rundown. Goro and Quan Chi boss towers provide you with gear pieces. The higher you progress, the higher quality gear you'll be able to farm. So securing a steady income of good gear as early as you can will give you a massive advantage over other players. Goro provides heads, arms, and legs, and Quan Chi provides weapons, torsos, and accessories. While the playable character Goro is Spirit Affinity, Boss Goro is actually Body Affinity, so you'll want to bring Mind characters to face him. After he breathes fire at nearby enemies, he will crouch down to recover. While he's kneeling, he takes significantly increased damage, so hold any big damage special abilities until he's kneeling so that they really chunk him down. Goro is also naturally weak to ranged enemies, so characters like Base Aaron Black, Sindel, and Tanya are among the top picks for Goro Boss Tower especially if you have one of the 5-star mine characters like Razor Hat Kung Lao, Fire God Liu Kang, or Cyrax. While the playable character Quan Chi is Spirit Affinity, Boss Quan Chi is actually Mind Affinity, so you want to bring Spirit characters to face him. 
Three times during the encounter, Quan Chi will summon a horde of Oni for you to face, and while there are any Oni on the field, Quan Chi is completely immune to damage, so you want to wipe out those Oni as quickly as you can. Characters that do an immense amount of area of effect damage are ideal for this battle, so characters like Raiden, Fire Support Jax, and Base Shao Kahn are among the top picks for Quan Chi Boss Tower, especially if you have one of the 5-star spirit characters like Goro or Arctica Sub-Zero. There's also Liu Kang Boss Tower, which is easily going to be your best source for coins. Boss Liu Kang is a spirit character, so you'll want a team of strong body characters to eliminate him. Boss Liu Kang is accompanied by a large amount of minions, so you'll want to bring a good spread of damage, but he also deals a colossal amount of damage with his special ability, so you'll want to bring at least one really solid tank to absorb his high burst damage. Characters like Base Kung Lao, Scarlet, and Frost do well against Boss Liu Kang, especially if you have one of the 5-star body characters like Undying Shao Kahn to tank, or Wind God Fujin to quickly cut down all the minions. And finally, there's Scarlet Boss Tower, which is where you'll secure a steady income of Ability Tomes, which are used to level a character's abilities. Scarlet is currently regarded as the toughest of the boss towers, as she requires some fairly specific characters to defeat her during late game. Boss Scarlet is a body character, so you'll want to use Mind Affinity against her, but she's also constantly healing herself, so bringing a character that can apply heal block is crucial. She also summons Tentacles in her backline, which significantly boosts her healing, so you'll want to use Snipers to quickly take them out. Characters like Base Aaron Black, Sindel, Tanya, and Noob Saibot are strong against Boss Scarlet, as are 5-star Mind characters like Razor Hat Kung Lao, Fire God Liu Kang, and Cyrax. The sooner you can farm a higher stage of boss tower, the sooner your resource income for that particular resource will be higher every day thereafter, so set yourself up for success. Arena Arena is the PvP game mode in Onslaught. Arena rewards include arena tokens, which you accrue after each battle, as well as crystals which are paid out at the end of each week. Arena tokens can be used for a variety of things including coins, boss tower energy, ability tomes, and more. Crystals are the premium currency for the game and can be used to purchase pretty much anything in the game, so you can never have enough. There are seven tiers, Initiate, Bronze, Silver, Gold, Master, Champion, and Legend. Each tier is also split into five divisions, except for Legend, which has six. Each week there's a soft reset, meaning you get reset down to the nearest 1,000 points. So if you manage to hit 2,012 points, you'll only be reset to Silver 5 back at 2,000. But if you finish at 2,970 points, you messed up, because you're still getting reset all the way back to Silver 5. There are also arena seasons, each lasting 12 weeks. After the 12 week arena season, everyone gets hard reset back to Bronze 5, and the climb begins again. Summoning. One of the most common new player questions I get asked is how to best spend crystals, and which summoning banners are best for new players. As of this recording, excluding the daily free summon, which of course you should do every day, there are four banners. Featured Fighter Summon, Apprentice Summon, Fighter Summon, and Relic Summon. Featured Fighter Summon requires Master Orbs, which come from daily quests and can also be purchased with crystals. If you aren't having any luck getting a featured character, you can actually guarantee them by performing 80 summons. This Pity Summon does not roll over to the next Featured Fighter banner, so make sure to save until you can afford at least 80 summons so you can ensure that you get the featured character. Apprentice Summon is going to be your go-to banner as a new player. Apprentice Summon is much cheaper than both Fighter Summon and Relic Summon, plus you can score both characters and relics. The drawback to Apprentice Summon is that your odds of pulling a 5-star character or an epic relic are pretty terrible. However, as a newer player, you want to get the most bang for your buck, so I strongly recommend doing Apprentice Summon until you've collected most of the 3-star characters and most of the common and uncommon relics. Once you reach the point where only 4 and 5 star characters and only rare and epic relics will actually provide you a much needed power boost, that's when it makes sense to switch over. Fighter Summon is the most expensive summoning banner, but it provides you with a fair chance to pull any 5 star character in the game, so it's definitely worth it. Relic Summon is currently the least utilized of the summoning banners. Obviously, if you feel like you have a healthy roster of characters, you can devote some Skull Orbs to Relic Summon and see if you can snag yourself an epic relic. However, many of the best epic relics can currently be purchased via the store for crystals, so you're better off saving up enough crystals to guarantee a specific relic that your team needs. And lastly, there are a couple things I definitely want to mention before I wrap this up. Firstly, you should definitely join the community Discord server. 
We have infographics, tier lists, boss tower strategy guides, leaks and data mines, and a whole lot more. You can join right now by going to discord.gg slash mkonslot. And secondly, keep an eye out because I will be releasing another new player guide, hopefully in the next couple of days, with my top 10 pro tips for new players. But there you have it. I think this video has gone on long enough. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to drop a like. If there's a topic you want me to cover in a future video, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and I will see you guys real soon. Until next time. Hey!